From South Carolina Public Radio, this is the South Carolina Lead. I'm your host, Gavin Jackson, and this episode was recorded on August 14th, 2023 from South Carolina Public Radio Studios here in Columbia. Just so you know, some of the information in this podcast may have changed by the time you've heard it. In this episode, we head to the Iowa State Fair. Sadly, we weren't there in person, but we catch you up with some of the big moments from the Agriculture Exposition that is a must-stop on the campaign trail. We also have sad news to report with the passing of Democratic State Senator John Scott of Richland County. The lead loves hearing from everyone. That's why we have set up a voicemail box that you can call to share your thoughts, hot takes, and questions at 803-563-7169. We'll also be interested in hearing your feedback about the podcast itself, what you like, what you don't like, what you want to hear more or less of. Let us know. You can leave us your name, where you're calling from, and what's on your mind. And if you don't want to be in the pod, just let us know. 803-563-7169. All right, let's jump to the Iowa State Fair which was the epicenter of the political world over the weekend. The best of Iowa agriculture, butter cows, fair rides, and food, and of course, a slate of 2024 Republican presidential candidates pandering to the people of Iowa. What could be better? That's right, candidates flocked to the opening weekend of the state fair in Des Moines, where they made several appearances at events, walked amongst the people in funnel cakes, hit the grills and posed for countless photos, and some even provided entertainment. Loud, he opens his mouth, but the words won't come out. He's joking how everybody's joking now. The clocks run out, time's up, over plow, snap back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. Oh, there goes With a real Vivek Ramaswamy, please sit down. Okay, that was enough. Thank you, DJ Vec. That's right, biotech entrepreneur and 2024 Republican presidential candidate Vec Ramaswamy was there rapping along to rapper Eminem's Lose Yourself after his fair side chat with Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds, who was on stage and looked a little bit confused when Ramaswamy got into his rap. But Reynolds was the ringmaster over the weekend, hosting several candidates for her fair side chats, including Ramaswamy, former Governor Nikki Haley, former Vice President Mike Pence, North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum, and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, all who we will hear from shortly. But let's stick with Ramaswamy here. This was his response when Reynolds asked him about reducing the size of government. Here's what he had to say. So I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do, but then I'm going to more importantly tell you how I'm going to do it. Because I know I'm in Iowa. (laughs) You guys demand the details. So the first thing is my first term in office, 75% headcount reduction across the federal employee base, 50% done in the first year. Take the government agencies that should not exist, from the FBI, to the IRS, to the ATF, to the CDC, to the Department of Education. Get in there and shut them down. That is how we revive the integrity of a constitutional republic. You know, if I'm the U.S. president, that's your choice, not mine, but if you all put me there, and I can't work for you for more than eight years, which I think is a good thing, then neither should any of those bureaucrats reporting into me. Civil service protections out, term limits in for the bureaucracy. This is one of the areas where I want to both give credit to my most recent Republican predecessor, Donald Trump, and where I want to say I want to build and to, on his foundation to go further. Where I give him credit was he's the first person in either political party to have identified this rot of a problem. That wasn't me. I was in the business world back when he was doing it. So I give him immense credit for actually having the courage to identify the problem of the deep state. And I said, I'm not going to be bashing other candidates. That includes him. Okay, I respect the most successful president in our century. Governor Reynolds, who is not endorsing anyone in the primary, much to the ire of former President Donald Trump, who did not participate in her chats, also hosted some other lower slash non-existent polling long shot candidates like Larry Elder and Miami Mayor Francis Suarez. And we'll hear from others like former Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson this week. Senator Tim Scott, who is polling third in Iowa at around 9.7 percent, will speak with Reynolds on Tuesday, so he's not in this podcast. But former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley joined Reynolds wearing cowboy boots, jeans, and a T-shirt that read, Underestimate me. That'll be fun. Haley pushed the need to cut the federal government past term limits, 
cut spending by vetoing budget bills that are above pre-pandemic levels, and she continued her call for mental competency tests for lawmakers over 75. But she tied the threat of China to national security and what it means for Iowa agriculture. Take a listen. Because right now, China's got his eyes set on Iowa. Why? China is our number one national security threat. They have been planning war with us for years. And that's not being dramatic. Look at the infiltration that China has done. They've bought up 400,000 acres of U.S. soil, most recently near Grand Forks Air Force Base. Right here in Iowa, they bought the largest pork producer in the country. If you want to know what they want, they're going after every farmer. Iowans are very good at agribusiness and agriculture and technology. They are stealing seeds from Iowa because China is food insecure. So they are trying to figure out how to go take what we have so that they don't need us. That's leverage. We need to make sure food security is national security. That's about us, and that's also about the rest of the world. Haley also shared a story about getting locked out of the governor's mansion during her first term in 2013, shortly after her husband Michael deployed with the South Carolina Army National Guard to Afghanistan. I had never heard this story before, so I figured I'd share it here for y'all. So he left me as a single mom governor when he deployed. Um, And yes, we're still married, so um, that says a lot. But one day we were sitting there and I was trying to get my two little ones out the door. And my son had a presentation he had to make. He was just a little thing. And so he had to wear a tie. And I didn't know how to tie a tie, so it was a little clip-on tie. But anyway, we're walking out the door, and he's he's like, Mom, I can't get my tie. And so I go to the detail agent, and I say, Can you help me get this tie? I can't get it. So we go and get the, the tie. I kiss his cheeks. I send him on his way. And, you know, I'm in my robe at the time. I turn around to open the door to the governor's residence, and it's locked. And so I'm sitting out in the robe outside the governor's residence, And I'm looking at the surveillance cameras going, let me in. Because I don't know when a TV truck is going to drive by, right? And so all of a sudden, like, it felt like five minutes went by. I don't know how long it was. My daughter opens the door and goes, Mom, what are you doing outside in your robe? And I said, I got locked out. She goes, well, I'm late. So I hurry up. I help her get dressed, send her out the door. And I happen to tweet what not to do um, is, you know, get locked out of the house with your robe on. And I get in the car and the detail says, ma'am, I'm sorry, you know, your morning started off rough. And I was like, oh, did you see my tweet? And he said, no, I heard it on the radio. And I go, oh. <laughs> and then I look at my phone and my staff is blowing me up going, did you just put a tweet out there that you got locked out in your robe? And the next thing I know, the Today Show, <laughs> CNN, all these people are like, have you ever been locked out of your house in the robe? Well, the governor of South Carolina has. And I get this email from my husband, Michael, and all it says is, really, Nikki? (laughs) Haley's campaign noted that she has held 36 events in the Hawkeye State and 45 events in New Hampshire since announcing her candidacy in mid-February. While former Vice President and Indiana Governor Mike Pence sat down with Reynolds, I pulled some clips from his spot at the Des Moines Register soapbox. There, he took questions from the crowd, including from someone who asked him, why did you commit treason on January 6th? This clip starts with folks booing the man who asked the question. Well, that's a fair question. Look, come on, people. That's why I came. No, I got you. I'll answer your question. I'll answer your question. Look, let me take you to January 20th, 2017. I put my left hand on Ronald Reagan's Bible, and I raised my right hand, and I swore an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. And it ended with a prayer. So help me God. My son, who's a captain in the United States Marine Corps, reminded me one time that it's the exact same oath that he took. It was a promise I made to the American people. It was a promise I made to Almighty God. Now, I know you might have a different impression about what my duties and responsibilities were on January 6th, and I'm happy to talk to you about it. The truth is that uh, states conduct our elections. They do. And once Iowa certifies the elections, when there are questions, you can go to court. Our campaign 
in 2020 had more than 60 lawsuits in courts around the country. There were also states that conducted recounts under the law. But when all that was done, if you read Article 2 of the Constitution, which I re recommend to you very respectfully, Article 2 says once the states send their electoral votes to the Congress of the United States, the Vice President, as President of the Senate, will preside over a joint session of Congress. And what it says is that that joint session, the electoral votes, shall be opened and shall be counted. It doesn't say may. It doesn't say you can send them back to the states. It doesn't say you can reject votes. Even though my former running mate and uh, many of his outside lawyers told me that that authority was there, I knew there never was. I mean, look, there's almost no idea more un-American than the notion that any one person could pick the American president. I mean, the American presidency belongs to the American people and the American people alone. Former President Donald Trump bucked a lot of the traditional Iowa State Fair activities. He wasn't flipping pork with Senator Joni Ernst or chatting with the popular Iowa governor, whom he's had beef with. Beef? Pork? And when he was handed a pork chop, the other white meat, on a stick, he held it up and then passed it off for someone else to eat. He flew his private plane, Trump Force One, above the fairgrounds, trolling his main rival, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who was working the crowd below. On the ground, Trump had with him a cadre of Florida politicians, including Congressman Matt Gates, in an effort to troll the two-term governor who was already being trolled and booed by fairgoers even as he walked the grounds with his family. Here's Donald Trump. So I just want to thank, this has been really, it's a trip of love, but it is all over the country, no matter where we go. There's never been enthusiasm. You know, we did great in 2016. We won. We did much better. I hate to say this. We did much better in 2020. The election was rigged. And we got millions and millions more votes. And I will say 2020 was fantastic. 2016 was fantastic. But we have never seen love and enthusiasm. Some of the people where, where we stopped, we stopped in 2020, we stopped in 2016. This blows it away. We set a record for people today. And uh, you're very special. You're very special to me. And we are going to take care of our country. We're going to take care of Iowa. And you're going to be proud of our country again. Right now, our country is a laughing stock all over the world. What we're doing to our country with millions and millions of people pouring into our country with no voter ID, with so many things. It's just so horrible. You see your taxes are going through the roof. Yeah. You know, what, I, what I've what i done, and I just feel so strongly about the farmers. You had somebody say, well, we don't really care about the farmers, meaning about the other side, and they don't care about the farmers. I don't even think they're coming here to campaign because they know they're not going to be able to... They're not going to be able to beat us. Nobody's done what we've done. And I'm not just talking about those kind of dollars. DeSantis has been barnstorming in Iowa like Haley, and he told folks over the weekend that he's visited 38 counties so far, knocking out six on Friday alone as he works to complete the full Grassley, which is Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley's annual trek to visit all 99 counties in the state, something he's done for more than 40 years. When DeSantis sat down for his fair side chat with Governor Reynolds, he was greeted by a group of protesters blowing whistles and a plane circling overhead with a banner that said, Be likable, Ron, while he promoted his record in handling of the COVID-19 pandemic and talked about the importance of parental rights. We are going to safeguard the rights of parents in this country to direct the education and upbringing of their kids. Uh, we are going to have school choice. We need to have this all across the country. Uh, you're never going to have, you look at these urban areas in this country, uh, some of them are like war zones. Uh, you can't be successful if every, every urban area is decaying. Part of the reason it's decaying is because the schools are horrible in places like Chicago and Los Angeles. I think we need to give these kids an opportunity to be liberated from failed school systems and give them an opportunity to go to school their choice. So we're going to push for that 100%. We're also going to ensure that um, we have opportunities. I'm a father. I got a six, five, and three-year-old. Uh, you saw Mason is right here, the five-year-old son. But I got, we have two daughters, my wife and I. And we don't think it's fair that if they want to participate in sports that someone will try to jam a, a man or a boy into competition with them. Uh, so we're going to protect girls and women athletes. <laughs> Title IX, make sure that, that they have the opportunities that they deserve. It's very, very important. Long shot candidate North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum 
also spoke with Reynolds. The former software developer turned governor has poured millions of his own money into his presidential bid, including promising those who gave his campaign a dollar, a $20 gift card in return. This helped him meet the donor requirement for the upcoming debate. Burgum talked about his life and his path to the North Dakota governorship, as well as his economic record in the state. Here's what he said when he was asked why he's running for president. Of course, we're running against uh, Joe Biden, and I think the reason why we win is because let's start with small-town common sense. Let's talk with an understanding of agriculture and energy, our two most important industries. Let's talk about an uh, understanding around technology, because technology is changing every job, every industry, and it need change, changing, needs to change every government, and it hasn't been doing that enough. But I think the other piece is actually leadership. I mean, people are looking for... Uh, we know that people love governors because governors know how to get stuff done. When we're governors, you know, if there's a blizzard in Iowa or North Dakota, we're, we're plowing the roads for Republicans, independents, and Democrats. We're not, this is not about, yes, we're not about, it's about getting it done. We, we, work, for, we work for everybody, and I think, the, you know, people talk, Americans understand what leadership is, and they understand that leadership is not about throwing bombs at you know, your competitors in the private sector, it's not about, I mean, if you want to pick sides and put on a red jersey or a blue jersey, you know, run for Congress. But, you know, I'm an operating guy. I'm an entrepreneur. I, I run stuff. I'm a CEO. I, I will never be a senator. I'll never be a congressman. I love the people that do that work. But when you're in the executive branch, if you do the executive branch right, you have an opportunity to improve every American life. And when we do it right, we can bring out the best of America. Senator Tim Scott is attending the state fair on Tuesday for a series of events, including Reynolds' fair side chat. Later that day, he will speak at the Story County GOP dinner in Cambridge, Iowa. And it wasn't just for Republicans. No, Democratic challengers Robert Kennedy Jr. and Marianne Williamson were also floating around the fairgrounds courting voters. However, Iowa is not the first in the country for the Democratic nominating process. South Carolina is. Yeah, take that, Hawkeye State. <laughs> While typically there isn't a primary when there is a party incumbent, since Democrats secured the top spot, many see the February 3rd primary as a slam dunk for Biden, but also a rehearsal for 2028 if we as a state keep the top spot, even though it comes at a cost of some $2 million to put on the primary. SC Democratic Party Director Crystal Spain has told media outlets that the only way the primary would be canceled is if no one files to run against President Joe Biden. Moving on, we have some sad news to report. Democratic State Senator John Scott of Richland County died Sunday, August 13th at the Medical University of South Carolina in Charleston. From complications of a heart attack, he was 69. Tributes continued to pour in for the senator, who was first elected to the State House in 1990 and served in the lower chamber until 2008, when he was elected to the State Senate, representing District 19 in Richland County. South Carolina Democratic Party Chairwoman Crystal Spain said in a statement, quote, He used his voice in the General Assembly to fight not only for his district, but for all South Carolinians, and his life's work on issues of education, health care, and economic development will have a lasting impact on our state. Senator Scott was my state senator, and I know firsthand how hard he fought for my community. His death is a tremendous loss for our party in all of South Carolina, quote. Senate President Thomas Alexander said, quote, the senator from Richmond was a friend, colleague, and true public servant. His work and dedication to his constituents and the citizens of South Carolina will be greatly missed, quote. In 2018, Scott ran for lieutenant governor on a joint ticket with gubernatorial candidate Marguerite Willis, who lost in the Democratic primary to former state representative James Smith. The next year, in 2019, Scott delivered the Democrats' response to Governor Henry McMaster's annual State of State address. Here's part of his speech. From our state capitol, those of us who call South Carolina home can agree that we are a great state one rich in history and full of strength. Having served almost 30 years in the legislature, I hope you can agree with me. It is time for a change. Tonight, I could use this opportunity to contradict everything that the Governor McMaster has said, rally my party's base, and raise my own political profile. But that won't get us anywhere. That would not do anything to help the father, who's too tired to help his children with their homework because he works two jobs to pay the bills and put food on the table. It would not do anything to help the teacher who works an extra shift at Walmart because all the professional training and expertise doesn't translate into professional wages. It would not help the grandmother in Bamberg or Fairfield County whose doctor left the rural county because the local hospital closed and now 
She has to drive more than an hour for treatment. All the while, her medical cost keeps going up and up. Sure, we could continue down the same path that we traveled last year, but that would not help the children in our communities whose mouths are filled with cavities because the only job mom and dad can find is working part-time at some big box store or telemarketing center that doesn't provide dental insurance. Other small business owner who is facing some of the highest health care and energy costs in the nation. Other truck drivers who are risking their lives every day while driving on roads and bridges that are crumbling beneath them. I invite the governor and his party to join us, not next week or after the next election, but right now, because it's time for change. And if we do not come together, then none of us deserve to be here. Governor McMaster said in a statement, quote, Peggy and I extended our prayers and deepest condolences to the family and friends of Senator John Scott. With over 30 years of service in the General Assembly, he has had a profound impact on Richmond County and all of South Carolina. He'll be deeply missed. May God bless him and his family, quote. The governor will soon order that flags be lowered in honor of Senator Scott's service to the state of South Carolina once funeral arrangements are made and announced. Scott, who ran a realty firm and a consulting firm, graduated from South Carolina State University in 1975 with an accounting degree. SC State President Alexander Conyers said, quote, He was a vital contributor to the university's success, as well as to those of South Carolina's other historically black colleges and universities. Quote, Conyers said that the center's faith in HBCUs was never more evident than when he led the recent effort to establish the South Carolina Institutes of Innovation and Information. This collaborative program involved seven HBCUs in South Carolina and brought the Institute of Business, Economics, Communications, and Transportation to SC State. Conyers continued by saying, We are seeing the fruits of Senator Scott's labors now with numerous projects, grants, and awards, which are spurring innovation at SC State by the way of the BECT Institute. Quote. Senator Scott was married with one son. Welcome to the wind down section, our little break from the news. We're glad you're here. This is our chance to talk about things that are not news related, give everyone a break from the constant news cycle. And that's what A.T. Shire, the leads producer, is really mm. good at. That's mm. what he's here for. That's why I'm here, to serve you. I'm a public servant uh, at my core. And to work on our drive time voices, <laughs> A.T. Whoa, Whoa! Check out 26. It's bumper to bumper out there. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, Gavin, uh, we got a call from someone we've gotten calls from before, okay? Uh, uh, so uh, if you're ready, I'm just going to dive right into this. And, and yeah. people will recognize this voice, okay? So just if you're ready. Dive into the shallow end. Here we go. Dive to no, dive, no running. Dive, dive. No diving, no, no running. running, no diving. Okay, here we go. Hey, uh, leaders. Vince Cole Blue Go just calling in. I wanted to uh, let you know. Well, how do I say this? I am part of the way through the wind down of the Miami episode and just heard the story of that poor kid barfing next to AT. And I, I wanted to take a second to say, kid, I see you because um, I was that kid. I'm still that kid. Anytime I get on a plane and I have to fly, uh, I get terrible motion sickness. I'm sorry if this is too much information for all you leaders, but I get terrible motion sickness. Um, and it's always the takeoff and the landing where the most turbulence is, aside from that unexpected turbulence that happens on planes. So, uh, kid, I feel you. And I'm sorry, AT made you feel even more uh, called out because he couldn't just sit there and be a man and sit next to you while you barf up your guts. Anyway, uh, glad you guys are back to Miami. See y'all later. Well, thank you for calling, Vince. And I think actually, I mean, I think that call actually helped uh, with our powers combined. I Gavin. think we could. We, have we summoned him? I think we can uh, manifest him right here. <laughs> Donkey sauce. Oh my God, He's Vince here. is in studio. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I hope you weren't doing anything important while we manifested you. Yeah. What were you in the middle of? Sorry. That's sorry. I'm glad you weren't in the bathroom. Did you, but did you guys <laughs> manifest me or did you squeeze me out somewhere? Oh, who knows, He's man? Like, who I was knows? just in my office and now I'm 10 feet away in the studio. It happens. Thank you for making time, even it's against your will. Right? Anyway, Vince, uh, I, Gavin and I both had you pegged as like a, a more hardy person. Yeah, like a the, no, somebody not at to steal. All. So you have a, a, a identical twin brother. Was he also the same, or were you, like, the sick one? <laughs> uh, I was always the sick one. Uh, 
This really started to manifest in uh, trips to Amarillo. So uh, oh. when I was a kid, we lived in this place called Dumas, Texas. Okay. Mm. Panhandle of North Texas. Panhandle. Oh, okay. Not and safe. If you want to drive and go do something, you would have to go to the next city, Amarillo, which is like an hour away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And suddenly, I just remember as a kid, uh, riding in the back seat. Oh, the back Part seat. of the way through, just feeling really sick. <laughs> and eventually, like, you know, barfing somewhere in yeah. the minivan. Um, to my parents' great disappointment. Chagrin. And then uh, it just manifested in planes and... So mm, much manifesting today. It's terrible. It would happen, like... um We'd be maybe we'd go to the playground like mm-hmm. near my grandfather's house, and we'd be driving back. It's like a fifteen minute drive back. But I was a kid. I love the tire swing. Mm-hmm. You get everyone to sit on, and it. you spin it, spin it as fast as possible. That was my thing. I was always yeah. doing the spinning, and so we, you might be okay like after you get flung off of it or after you stop. But then you, you're like your body's still. You spinning. got the spins. Yeah, <laughs> you get in the car, and it's like. I don't know if we're gonna make it to 15 minutes home. <laughs> I used to be like I used to be like you, Vince, before I grew up, and um, <laughs> and uh, I remember when I was on the plane, I used to announce to everyone near me. Oh no! I threw up, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I, I would like hold the bag up. Oh. I threw up, and my dad would be like, "Come on, dude." Now, see, I'm much more discreet about it now, and I don't think people even next to me actually know that I'm doing it. You got oh, like a wow. silent. What's your technique? Yeah, my, let's, let's uh, break this down. Uh, <laughs> So again, too much information for all you leaders out there. But um, I usually get one bag, maybe two if necessary, mm-hmm. and um, I'll just put that Double right hit. up over the face, over the nose, and over the chin. Pip. And <laughs> and, and if you just start going, then just you start feeling it. Then you just kind of go down as oh. if you're uh, you know taking the safety position. If the plane's going down, that's a silencer, huh? And uh, yeah, <laughs> see me the cry. I'm like, <gasps> like there's so much that goes into it for me. I think I gracefully handled the child barfing. I, next you to me. really did. I was there. I saw the whites of your eyes, and I said, "It's okay." Like, you, I mean, it would have been different if you got like splashed. All yeah, over. there was nothing on that my person. That would have been different. Yeah, I, that's I, hard for anyone to, to deal with at that point. <laughs> Vince, this is just really embarrassing information. Information. I'm glad you came and, well, and felt I you feel could like share. Car is always trickier, but do is it every time you fly on a plane, or is it just gonna be like it's really bad turbulence? Definitely every time I get on a plane, no, I have to uh, take my I have to take my Dramamine. And yeah. if I don't take the two doses as yeah. recommended, it usually yeah, spells trouble. Oh, I don't. I know that you guys are both millennials, also, and this is what would get me as the kid is. The reverse facing yeah. station wagon back. We had that in the tourist station wagon. Do you ever get in one of those? Oh yeah, nightmares. I, it, yeah. If you're I was in the back seat, box. Of, it doesn't matter which direction I'm facing. Facing the other way, Ooh. and you're just staring at the person behind you. Yeah. You know, like oh, really yeah. weird, really it was awkward. It was, it was the best in the, the Jackson family tourist station wagon. Look, while I'm here, I just want to clarify yeah, one thing. Get on your easy, soapbox, Vince. Easy. I I easy. do not like candy corn. Liar. Uh, I a lie. Do not uh, like a it. lie. Well, good yeah. induced vomiting. Well, let's uh, let's. I've never thrown up on a plane. Just want to put that out there. For good everybody. for you. Good for you. I enjoy the turbulence. Okay? In my adult I'm life, I haven't. I, I love those drops. Like, Whoa! but like, you got to be in the right state. Man, like, if if I'm coming back from like a long weekend somewhere, it's like mm-hmm. let's have some smooth sailing, because those drops can really. You Amen. always got to keep your seatbelt on for those moments yeah. there. Too. Anyway, Vince, uh, speaking, of, we're, we're speaking right. about so many things we don't like. Yes, let's get to. We've been. I asked everyone in the last episode okay. if you see a movie mm-hmm. online or on the TV that you're like flipping through or something. Like, what what is a movie that for you, if you see it, your plans out the window? You're watching this movie. Drop everything and watch. It exactly. was always Airplane. Airplane. Oh wow, oh. wow, what a tie-in right there. I love that movie. Yeah. Though. It was always Airplane. Yeah, it's and so good. It's, I don't know why. I recently watched it on a streaming service, though. Yeah. And don't realize how much editing goes into the TV cuts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some lines. <laughs> Just, that there's a lot that doesn't make it, make it in. Yeah. I love those Same movies. Same with Silence of the Lambs, which I watched over the weekend, Gavin, which is a movie that I would definitely watch on TV. Silence but of the Lambs. Talk big about time. a lot of editing yeah. for the TV version of that one. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, uh, uh, yes, sir. She was a big girl. That's a, that's a good poll. Uh, I thought of over the weekend, Caitlin says Dirty Dancing mm. and Heat, mm. which- Fascinating. Love, love, the very disparate. Strong, there. Yeah, yeah. Strong showing for your wife. So, uh, yep. That's you gotta really be proud of that. Pretty good. Heat. Vince, thank you. Thank you so much we for- said Jurassic for Park, too. Bearing yourself- oh, and You're Jurassic welcome. Park. Don't like candy corn. 
it's a okay. lie. He's going to... falls right around the corner. We'll have plenty of can of Plenty, corn plenty. Well, thank you, Vince. If you have any other grievances, if you want to come and try to pretend like you could beat me in any sport, you can come on and uh, mm. we can talk about it. Okay, bud? I mean, technically beat you in kickball. <laughs> yeah, well, he, the, the two saboteurs <laughs> in one room right here. <laughs> it was one uh, uh, conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, have a good week, everyone. Thank you, Vince. Thank Gavin, you, Vince. say outros. Yeah, folks, you can be like Vince and uh, leave us a voicemail. We can manifest you into the studio. Or just leave us a voice mod at 803-563-7169. And thank you for listening. Of course, you can show us your appreciation by leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts. And stay up to date with the latest news on SCTV.org and SouthCarolinaPublicRadio.org. And don't forget to support your local newspapers. For the South Carolina lead, I'm Gavin Jackson. Be well, South Carolina. I don't like candy corn. Uh, if you... Uh... If you actually pay attention, it's quite a perfect predator. Uh, I, I actually love it. <laughs> uh, if you look at the virus, it's it's a chimera. <laughs> it's actually it's, it's not that bad. It's actually beautiful. I actually love it. Uh...